Hey guys, Mr. Cheeps here. This video is going to be pretty short, but I think it's somewhat important, as we're going to go over things that are necessary to know before we do more advanced object settings. Fluid domains are divided up into cells, sometimes also referred to as voxels. You can increase and decrease the amount of cells in your domain to change the resolution and detail of the simulation. Naturally, the simulation will take longer to bake the more cells are added. When the simulation is baked, Mantaflow stores data that is then used to playback the simulation in the viewport and render it. This data is stored in different ways for liquid and smoke simulations. Smoke sims store attributes, density, color, temperature, flame, heat, and velocity. These can be accessed for shading your smoke simulations in the node editor. Density stores how dense the smoke is, how much smoke is filling each cell of the domain. Color stores the color of the smoke. Temperature stores the temperature of each cell between 0 and 1000 Kelvin. This can be used for more realistic rendering of the smoke. Flame stores how dense the flames are in each cell. Heat stores heat similarly to the temperature attribute. They give different results. Temperature seems to be a bit more white and black in terms of bias, whereas heat gives more of a gradient. The last attribute tied to gas simulation is velocity. In Blender 2.82a, the version we're using in this tutorial series, it doesn't seem to do anything at all. I've done some experimenting in the Blender 2.9 alpha builds, and it does store something, but is still pretty broken. Hopefully this works better in the future. Liquid simulations don't store things in the same way as smoke sims. We have a particle system after the initial bake, which is then baked into a dynamically changing mesh so we can use surface shaders instead of volume nodes. Spray, foam, and bubbles are all stored as particle systems as well, so you won't find any attributes here. Now then, let's talk about some good practices that you should almost always follow when creating your fluid simulations. Always apply the scale of your objects. You can do this with the Ctrl A hotkey to bring up this menu and select Scale. If the scale of your objects is not applied, then you can get some weird, inconsistent results. Make sure the origin for your domain is always located in the center. You can do this by bringing up the search menu with F3, typing in Set Origin, and selecting Origin to Center of Mass, Volume. Again, things can get a little messed up if you don't do this. Start with a low cell resolution and work up from there as you make your simulation. The higher the resolution divisions of your domain, the longer it will take to calculate the simulation. So keep those relatively low for quicker bake times until you have your simulation to a point where you need more detail. In the next video, we're going to be looking at flow objects. So make sure that you subscribe to the channel and ring the little bell so that you don't miss that. Thank you all for watching and have a great day.